Creating an accessible document ensures that it can easily be read, perceived, and understood by people with disabilities. Welcome to Somo Experiences. My name is Irene Sedede, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make your Word document accessible using Microsoft 365. We'll touch on the basic following topics, which include headings, images, color, tables, links, and also how to use the accessibility checker. In this step-by-step -step guide, not only will you learn how to make your Word document accessible, but you'll also understand the importance of making sure that your document can be read and understood by everyone. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we have headings. These make it easier to organize your document and also make it easy to navigate. So when you're in your Word document, what you would do in order to set the headings would be to highlight the area that you want your headings to be set. So in this case, I do want how to make your Word document accessible with Microsoft 365 tutorial. I do want for that to actually be the title of this document. So what you simply do is you'd highlight that section, you'd go to home, and then from here you will see the different heading styles that are in the home tab ribbon. Now what you would select in this case, because I do want it to be the title, what you will do is you would go all the way to title and you'd select title. And as you just saw that, change that into a title. Now what's amazing about Word is that it does have built-in styles and these are what are referred to the built-in styles. And these built-in styles are actually created in a way that is already accessible. So you don't have to do any kind of guesswork to try and ensure that these heading styles that you're choosing are accessible. These built-in styles are already created in that way. So you'd simply just select whichever one you prefer, and then it will ensure that your document is accessible. Next, let's talk about images. When you add a picture to your Word document, you always want to add alternative text, also referred to as alt text. And the reason why you do this is because it describes the image to someone who may not be able to see it. So for instance, if someone has a vision impairment, they're able to use a screen reader where the screen reader describes what the image is displaying to them. So you want to kind of think about it as though it's giving your image a voice. So in order to add alternative text to your image, what you want to do is actually select the image and you will see at the top within the menu, picture format will show up. So what you want to do is select picture format. And from here, you just want to scroll all the way to alternative text. Select alternative text. It's telling you how you would describe this object and its context to someone who is blind or who has low vision. So it's giving you basically like guidance on how you can actually add that alternative text, which is actually really amazing. So what you'll simply do is add the alternative text within the box. And if this is something that is considered as a decorative image, so what a decorative image is, is that it is something that's just there for display or to make the document look pretty. It doesn't really have any context that is related to what the document is about. And a rule of thumb, if it's not important for your learner or for whoever is accessing the document to know what that image is about, or it's not providing any kind of context that is related to the information within the document, you would preferably want to mark that as decorative. And once you've added that alternative text into the box, you simply would just exit out of that. Another great thing about Microsoft 365 is that they have now implemented the ability to generate alternative text. So you can basically use artificial intelligence or AI to generate alternative text to describe the image. And I'm going to test it out because from my experience, though this is an amazing feature, the alternative text that's generated through AI is not always so accurate. So you may have to edit or adjust what is generated for it to actually fit the actual description. So as I said, I'm going to play around with it so we can all see how it works together. So if I click generate alternative text for me, it says a stack of colorful macaroons. That's really great. I mean, for a starting point, that's pretty great that it's able to identify that and also describe it in that way. 
but you do want to add a little more details that way for someone who may be visually impaired, they can better understand the actual image. So for instance, you may want to include the actual colors that are showing. So the green and the orange and the pink and the purple, that way they have a better understanding of what is actually showing in the image. And once you've added your alternative text, you simply just want to exit out of that. Next, let's get into colors. So colors are a fun way to make your document more exciting and even maybe increase the engagement of scrolling through your Word document. But colors have to be specifically chosen in a way that is intentional because you have to ensure that these colors that you're using within the document make the document easy to read. So a rule of thumb is that you always want to pick high contrast colors for text and background. And this is just an easy way for you to ensure that your document is accessible accessible for everyone. So let's get into how you can make your document accessible using high contrast colors. So for this document, I have used the green color for different areas within the document just to highlight some things that I think would be important for the reader to, you know, just focus on when reading or reviewing this document. So the way that you want to check to see if the color is actually accessible or if the contrast is meeting the accessibility standards, what you will do is highlight that specific area. And then what you want to do is select review within the menu tab. And when you select review, what you will want to do next is select check for accessibility. And once you check for accessibility, you will see that there are different things that do show up. And one of the warnings is that there is hard to read text contrast. So here's basically telling you that there's not enough contrast between the text and the background for this specific sentence or heading within your document. And it is identifying the different areas. These three areas are the areas within the document where I did change the color to green. So what you can do is change that specific color and use the accessibility checker to ensure that it's actually meeting the color contrast standard. So let's go ahead and try that and see if it actually will work. What you do is go to home and where it is showing the font color, you'd simply just select a different font color. So let's go ahead and choose a dark blue, for instance, and see if that will work. When I select a dark blue, Automatically within the accessibility checker on the side, it no longer has step three color indicated as a hard to read text contrast warning issue within the accessibility checker. So that's really awesome. You can easily use the accessibility checker to ensure that you're using the correct text contrast. This is so helpful because you don't have to actually go into Word and find the actual code of that specific color and go to a website such as WebAIM to check to make sure that the contrast is meeting the standards. You can simply do that within Word. That is very helpful <laughs> and it actually streamlines the process where you don't have to go to that different website or you don't have to exit out, go back and do it manually. You can simply just do it right here. That is amazing. So let's get into the next item. So when you're adding a link to your document, you want to make sure that you add text or description that explains where the link goes. For people who are using assistive technology, such as a screen reader, this actually helps with navigating the document and also helps with understanding where the link is going to take them. Something that you want to avoid is inserting your links this way. So this has the actual title of what the link is or where the link is taking you. So for instance, it says create accessible links and then there's a semicolon. And then after that is the actual link for that specific website or web page. This is not accessible. A screen reader will not be able to detect where this specific link is going or even give details of what the link is about. So in order to change that, what you would do, so here I have a description of what the link is about and it says create accessible links. So I would highlight that and then I would simply go to insert. And when you select the insert menu, 
you will see that there is an actual button that leads you to links. So you would simply select add a hyperlink. And then from here, it is showing the text that will display for that hyperlink. And then right here in the address, you can actually add the actual hyperlink. I do have it copied, so I'd simply just paste it in there. And then I would select OK. It's automatically turned that um, sentence into a hyperlink. So now that link will read out as create accessible links. So what I'm going to do is actually delete this section because now we have an accessible hyperlink that has been added there. Though so this is great, you might want to take it a step further and actually describe in more detail where this link is taking you and what exactly it's describing. A good example for this instance, I could change this to how to create accessible links. And the next item we're going to cover is tables. Tables usually help organize information neatly. For example, using headers for rows and columns will actually make it easy for a screen reader to be able to interpret and understand the structure of the table. The first thing we're going to do is understand how to actually insert a table that is accessible using Microsoft Word. The first thing you want to do is place your cursor where you want the table to be inserted. And then you'd simply go into the menu tab and select insert. And from here, you will see the table menu. From here, what you will do is simply select the drop down menu so that you can add a table. In this example, we're just going to do three by two, or let's do two by three. Yeah, let's do that instead. And you're just going to simply hit select. And as you can see, it added the tables within the document. So as you can see, the table has been inserted within my Word document. So for instance, if the purpose of this table is to differentiate the different features between a Mac and a PC, what you're going to need to do is add headings. In this case, let's just add Mac to the first one and then you see for the second part of the table. And in order to ensure that this table is accessible, you want to make sure that you're marking as a header row. So what you would do is you would select the row and then you can right click and then select table properties. And then from here, what you do is make sure that you select repeat as header row at the top of each page. And then you want to select OK. So you want to also make sure that you're assigning column headers. So for each column, you want to ensure that it has a clear header or label. So you want to make sure that you're highlighting the column and then going through the same process of selecting table properties. And then from here, just adjust those items as needed. Okay, so before I get into actually checking for accessibility, I did want to give a bonus tip on ensuring that your Word document is accessible. And that tip is actually going to be making sure that your lists are also created in a way that is accessible within your Word document. So when it comes to lists, you want to ensure that you're using numbered or bulleted lists rather than manually typing that within your actual Word document. As you can see within this Word document, there are a few lists and they do have bullet points assigned to these lists are actually not manually inputted. So let's say you did come up with a list and you want to ensure that you're using the bulleted lists or numbered lists within Word. All you'll simply do is highlight the items that you want to be listed, select home, and then from here you'll be able to input your preferred bullets, numbering, or even multi-level lists. All you have to do is select it and automatically it will list your items for you. Last but not least, we're going to get into how you can use the accessibility checker to ensure that your whole Word document is accessible. Now, what an accessibility checker does is that it scans your document for issues and it gives you tips on how you can fix those issues or how you can actually remediate your Word document to ensure that it has the accessibility features added to it. So think about it as a guide or even as a helper that's ensuring that your document is easy to understand and is also clear for a person who may have a disability. So to run the accessibility checker, all you will simply have to do is select the review tab in the menu. And then from here, you will select check accessibility 
And as you can see, the accessibility checker will automatically generate. So from the results, it is showing that you need to review the auto-generated alternative text. And when you click down the arrow, it is actually going to indicate what image that is. And when you select it, it will take you all the way back to where the image is located within the document. Once you've gone through the process of remediating your document and ensuring that it's as accessible as possible, you want to run that accessibility checker. After you run the accessibility checker and you see that there are no issues or it's not giving you any feedback or suggestions of things that you can improve or change, the next step is that you want to use something like a screen reader or any kind of assisted technology out there to go through the document and make sure that it is conveying the information in a way that is understandable, perceivable, operable as well as robust. A great example of assistive technology that you can use is NVDA. This is actually a screen reader which will actually go through your document, read it out loud, and you can get a better understanding of what it would be like for someone who is utilizing that assistive technology to go through your actual document. So NVDA is actually free. All you have to do is download it and add it onto your computer and you can go through the process of that. And the last step is to save and distribute your document. So as you know, Word is one of the best ways to make your document accessible before converting it into a PDF document. So it's always recommended to have your document created in Word first, use the accessibility checker and add those accessibility elements and features, and then convert it into a PDF. That way, when you're distributing it as a PDF, the PDF is also automatically accessible. If you still have some challenges with the PDF document being accessible, you can definitely check out my video on how to make your PDF document accessible. I will link it in this video and you can also remediate it there using Adobe Acrobat Pro DC. So by following these steps, you should now be able to make your Word document accessible. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Irene Sudede and I will see you in the next one.